This old house is made possible by a grant from Owens Corning Fiberglass, makers of pink fiberglass insulation, fiberglass ceiling panels, bathing fixtures, and other Owens Corning building products that put houses in the pink. Hi guys, looks great, go slow. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, welcome to this old house. If you were with us last week, you might recall that this was Rob and Jennifer's master bedroom, but it needed a bathroom along with it, so they've decided to do the remodeling themselves. And you've done a great job of demolition, I must say. I'm proud of you. <laughs> well, we worked uh, hard yesterday, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we couldn't have gotten it done without Norm. He was a big help. Glad Norm, Norm was here. I wasn't, but our cameras were. Let's take a look. I'm glad you're here, Norm, because we've done a lot of prep work. Uh, for instance, we tore up the rug in the, ba in the bedroom and used the pad to cover up this carpet out here. But uh, we're not sure where to go from here. Well, that's right. You know, you've, you've really got to protect the rest of the house while you're doing this. Even though you're working up here, when you start to rip out plaster, that dust is going to travel. So use what you can to cover and maybe even get some plastic and put it over some of the door openings of doors you don't use very often. So that that dust doesn't get in there. Okay. Well, we're going to start by going through this wall because we're changing the way the door works. Okay, that's right. Your new entrance is through here, but you don't really want to knock this wall down first. Okay. You want to get the inside of that room cleared out first of all, and then this wall can come down. Now, because you're having your new entrance here, you're going to have to take these door frames out and the casings and all the trim. And I think I can show you better inside how we can do that. Okay. You know, it's well worth saving all this trim. The casings, as you can see, are a special casing. You can't go down to the lumber yard now and buy pieces of casing like this. The head pieces up here have moldings, which are all mitered around the corners. And so if you're very careful when you take it off, we can, you could reuse this again when you put the doors in the new locations. Now, it's fairly simple. All you really need is a flat bar like this. It's a fairly thin tool which allows you to get behind the casings and of course just a regular ordinary hammer. And what you really have to do is get the bar carefully drive it in behind the casing and pry it out. And you just work your way down. So, you know, take your time because you've got the time to Take them off and save them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just take it out. Now, you've got nails, and some stay in the wall, and some stay in the casing. Now, the thing you don't want to do is take the hammer and drive these nails back through, because what will happen is it'll knock holes on this side, which will be harder to repair when you get ready to paint them again. So what you do is you just take the hammer and hook the nail, Bend it over and just keep working at it. And pull them out from the back side. So it doesn't damage the front? That doesn't damage the front. I see. Now, with all the nails out, you'll be able to stack them up somewhere. But also, I think it's important that you take a marker of some kind and label each piece of casing and each door frame so that when you put it back together, you use the same pieces with the same door. I see. Now later, when you get all the trim off, I'll show you how to take the door frame out so that you can save that. Okay. I'm a little worried about this uh, special other little built-in place over here that we have. There are drawers that go under the eaves, um, and it's got the same kind of trim on it. Uh, okay. You can take this out also, just like we did with the door, basically. You're going to take the casings off all the way around the top and the side pieces, and more than likely this whole unit will be able to come out all in one piece. Okay. Now, we, got, we also have baseboard to deal with. Jennifer, if you could get me that flat bar again, we can show you how to take that off. Now, it isn't worth saving this piece of base here because it goes down beneath the edge of the floor, and more than likely it's almost impossible to get it out without breaking it. But this piece of base molding is I definitely see. worth saving. So it's the same procedure. You take the bar, carefully 
drive it down behind the molding and just pry it off. It comes right off. <laughs> You're pretty lucky because sometimes it doesn't come off this easily. Now this one goes behind that piece of baseboard. So we'll have to work it out a little bit. Okay, and now pull the nails out of this the same way as you did on the door casings okay. and save all of these pieces. Okay. Now they may not go back in the same place, but you're adding closets and things, so you could use so that to... to mark those? No, it's not necessary to mark those. Now, it's pretty hot today, yes, and sure you're going to need some more ventilation in here, especially when you remove the plaster. So these windows don't provide very much, so I think you should take these window sashes totally out so that you can get some more air in here. Now, the first thing you have to do is take a screwdriver and take the screws that are in the window stops out. And in this case, there's only three. We just remove those. You know, when you, also another reason to take these windows out is I think a little bit later on when you put them back in, for a few extra dollars, you'll be able to get some better weather strips and make them more <coughs> tighter. Now we remove this stop and then push the window down so that it's below the pulley. Just carefully tip it out like that. And then you've got to pull these sash cords off. This one has a little nail in it. Okay, and it has a knot, so we just can let it rest back up against the pole. Take yours out. Okay. And now the top sash, you have to push it all the way down to the bottom and take this parting bead out. And they're a little bit tight sometimes, too. The reason you push the window to the bottom is so that you can pull this out like that. Okay. Now this weight has already fallen off. And then we take this one out the same way and pull the cord off. Now if you do the same thing down the other end, you'll get plenty of ventilation in here. Okay. <laughs> now I have a job about 20 minutes from here that I have to get back to, but I'll come back about noontime and Check it out and see how much you've got done. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, where do you want to start? You want to start with the molding and I'll pull the sash out of the window. All right. <laughs> Come on in, Norm. Hey, Rob. Good to see you. How's it going? Not bad. <laughs> we've got just about everything out. And uh, it's really been pretty good. We've uh, trimmed away the... Pull away the molding and cleared both windows. Jennifer's just labeling the, uh, the last door trim. Here. Okay, no surprises? No, not any big surprises. A couple of blood blisters here and there. <laughs> well, I brought a couple of tools with me. Okay. And I thought the first thing that I would do is show you how to take this door jam out because, you know, again, this is like your trim. To go to the lumber yard and buy another frame, it would cost you about $30. $30 for this? So it's, that's right. So it's well worth saving it. Plus, that would be $30 for the frame, plus the butts would cost you another 3 or $4 a pair, so you might as well save everything you can. So now you could pull all the nails out, but I use a reciprocating saw, and if you've got some power, yep. and all I'm going to do really is wherever you see these shims or blocks of wood between the rough framing and the door, that means that that's where they've nailed it. Uh -huh. and use these to straighten the door. So what I'm going to do is cut the nails off. And that should be it. Should be able just to tilt it out. Okay. The bottom nails a little bit. There's, there might be some flooring nails there. There you go. Let's pull it out. Yeah. Okay. That makes it a little bit easier. Right. <laughs> Now the next thing that you really have to do is, before we get into any of this plaster, we've got to make sure that 
we take care of any electrical outlets. Right. So what I'll do is have these little testers. They only cost probably less than a dollar. You can get one down at the hardware store. And what you do is stick it in the socket, and that little light comes on. Now, if one of you could go down to the basement, we'll find okay. which fuse it's on. I'll do that. Okay, that's it. All right, now we know it's safe to work on it anyway, so you don't get any shocks. And we just take the cover plate off. And then take the screws out of the plug itself that hold it into the box. You might be getting rid of these boxes later when you do it, but at least for the time being, we don't want anyone to be getting any shocks. Pull it out. Take a pair of just regular pliers. These are like Lyman's pliers. Snip the wires off. Then we'll take some tape, just to be doubly sure that no one runs into it. And... Now that tape does not conduct electricity, so no. even if somebody touched it... it what you do it. is, see, we, I run it. Yeah, you won't be able to touch the bare wire, because what I do is wrap the tape like this, let it go beyond the end. I see. A little bit and then, you know, squeeze it together. So now the ends of the wires are protected so I see. no one can touch those. The boxes can come out later. So you want to do that to All the every outlet and the lighting fixtures the same way. Okay, so we just take that off and do the same thing. That's right. So now basically we're ready to start cutting back for the plaster that has to be removed. Okay. Now this wall is the first one that's going to be removed. And again, we'll use the Sawzall because what I'd like to do is cut the plaster between, we'll leave the ceiling up. Okay. So I want to cut the plaster right at the intersection of the ceiling and the wall. And in order to do that, I have to change the blade first. Okay. Okay. Well, now with that cut, you're going to be able to save your ceiling, which will uh -huh. save it, and I'm sure that that'll help. Now, let's just see. All this takes to take this plaster down is a lot of hard work and some sweat. Really just start, bust the hole through, see what we've got. And this is uh, not the old wood lath, but a little different material. What you're going to have to do is just keep busting at it, picking at it, getting it down, pick it up, throw it in the barrels, get it out. Okay. Now, I want you to strip all this wall that I've cut back for you, the inside of this closet, okay. the ceiling, the walls, and then you can take down the sheetrock or the wall board that was put up on this closet, and I'll be back to check on you in a couple hours okay. and see how you're getting along. Thanks a lot. Okay? <laughs> yeah. See you in a while. All right. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, I think so. Grab it. Does stud go diagonally? No, no, but that's the outside wall. for our lining on the stairs. No. We'll put it back. Again? Many more? Come on. Like the Olympic javelin. Right. <laughs> Hi, Norm. How you doing? You didn't tell us it would be this easy. <laughs> Looks like you've done quite a job here. Well, we're just about done. I think there's just this one wall to go. And once we get that down. Just uh, loose, ready to go? I think so. I think it'll just get so if you can give us a hand. Right. Oh. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Great. 
What's left is the living room. Well, uh, what do we do now? Next, the roof. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Jennifer. You've done a terrific job. Well, we missed you, Bob. You would have loved it. <laughs> I just have one question for you, Bob, and that is the last thing Norm said was, the only thing left is the roof. What does he mean? He means you've got to tear that part of the roof off. And the only way you're going to do it is from the outside. What we have to do is build a stage now so that we can work out there. All right. I think ladders are in order. Come on, I'll take you to ladder headquarters of the Western world. Okay, Jennifer, why don't you finish the heavy work? We'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> this is the biggest place for <laughs> ladders and staging anywhere in New England. I guess. As you can see, most of the industry has gone to aluminum in the last few years. Oh, almost every size you could imagine, but they still manufacture wooden ladders. Am I gonna have to buy most of these ladders? <laughs> uh, they're pretty expensive, these big ones. No, I don't think you'll have to buy them because they also do a rental business here. Uh -huh. Let's go in the office and look for Al. Well, the other thing I'm worried about, of course, is how to get them home. Well, you can always put them on top of the car <laughs> and tie them down. Hi, is Al here, please? Oh, sure, he's calling for him. Bob Vila. Okay, Bob, one moment. You know, the, the, the thing about strapping them on yeah, the car yeah. is that since they're, yeah, you know, sure, they thanks. shorten up, you can usually get one, put a red flag on the back of it and not have oh, to okay. worry about it. Okay, ski rack. Yeah, it depends Hi, on the car. Hi, how have you been, Al? Good, nice to see you. This is my friend Rob. Hi, Hi Rob, Al. nice how to meet you? you. We're involved in a little project at his place. It's a cape, and we're uh, kind of putting a big shed dormer on the back of it. Yeah. And it's 20 feet up in the air, so we've got to rig something up. Okay, do you own any equipment at all now to do it with? I have a stepladder. <laughs> That's all, okay, well. Everyone's got to buy an aluminum step, aluminum extension ladder to start off with. So let's show you that, and we'll see what we can do to help you out. We're okay. thinking more about rentals, though. Okay. You're thinking about rentals. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could to start off with uh, rent a couple of good aluminum industrial ladders mm -hmm. and put some kind of device on it to hang a plank off of, which we'll show you. These are awfully short now. Yeah. These are four-foot <laughs> showroom samples, so that we can show everybody in a nice small area what the ladder looks like. Yeah. What makes us a good ladder, first of all, is that it's rated for 250 pounds, okay. which means it's been tested to 1,000. Mm -hmm. It comes complete with the plastic end caps, the shoes at the bottom, the rope, and a good heavy-duty lock. Now, the lock works very easily, which many older ladders, Bob, as you know, people were afraid of them because the locks didn't work mm -hmm. as great as mm -hmm. these. What makes this better than like a lightweight household grade ladder, a ladder rated at 200 pounds, is pretty much the material in the side rail the amount of space you have to stand on. Yeah, this is a lightweight. That's a household grade, lightweight, rated It's a real thin pounds. extrusion, yeah. Great if Rob's going up and gonna clean the gutters twice a year and that's all. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna get involved with some kind of scaffolding, which is what we're talking about, you use a couple of industrial ladders like this, and what you would do is you would take two of them, because uh -huh. you wanna stand an area probably about 12 feet, and you'd put a device called a ladder jack on it. Now, this is a steel ladder jack. They've been around a long time. They're rather awkward and clumsy, yeah. <clears throat> and they go on the ladder like this. Uh -huh. Not the greatest thing when you're working at, at 20 feet because it has a tendency to uh, to pinch your fingers. I, I can't really say that it'll solve your particular problem, but it's one way because if you can rent the ladders, you can buy ladder checks relatively you inexpensive. You just stand on here? No, what you do is you stand on a plank which goes there. I see. You use one or two planks like this. Now, you're going to have to get it level, which we've got a pretty level. Why don't you try that and see how you like it? Well, so you'd have another ladder with another jack at the other end of the plank. That's right. Um, is this is about as steady as it gets, I well, suppose. Well, it is, and all the other problem you have is there's nothing at your back to support you from falling <laughs> off. You right. think you can get Jennifer up on a plank? <laughs> Hanging 10, right? Uh, What's well, another option? Well, another option would be if you want to make it a little more secure, would be to go to a device like this. This is an aluminum version, a little easy to use. I know I've used them myself, and I like them because you can just hook it onto the rung. Now, this will go on the front or the back. It's much easier to adjust, but once again, you've got the problem of only the 2 by 10 planks up here. I see. Which, as you see, were a little shaky, and no back rail. Once again, you'd use two of these. You'd put one on the right, one on the left. You'd also have to climb up over it. Yeah. The next option would be to go to a ladder like this. This is a trussle or an A-frame ladder. I don't think that would work at all. We've got some real uneven ground underneath the work okay. area. Okay. Well, this wouldn't because you need a fairly level area for this underneath it. And mm -hmm. once again, you can only put the one plank on it. Mm -hmm. If you've got an uneven terrain situation, you would probably go into a, a device like this here. This is called a pump jack. Now, the part of this that is the pump jack is only from here to here. The blue steel. The blue steel device. section. It is made up of a number of different components. The jack itself climbs on a wooden pole, which is made from two by fours that are nailed together. Now, they're special two by fours. They're vertical grain Douglas fir. They should be kiln dry. 
as you know, if you use spruce poles, they're too soft in this application. Mm -hmm or if you use pressure treated lumber, they were not designed to be used in this application. Now to make this system work, first you put a brace at the bottom of the pole, nailed into the wall, and a brace at the top of the pole. So that's now what you have to be careful of with the bracing is when you nail into the house, is this an older house or a newer house? It's about 50 years old. Okay, well in an older house, you don't have to worry about them being any foam board insulation mm -hmm. underneath the clapboard. So you could just nail them in and that would hold the poles up. Now yep. at 20 feet, a, ja a jack in the middle, a brace at the bottom, a brace at the top, and a device like this. This is a Gadra holder. This is the first time you're going to see one of these. On the other devices, there really weren't any way to put a back support here. If you put this up in here, you'll see that you'd have a 2 by 4 at your back, mm -hmm. so that you won't fall up. Want to get up and try it? Sure. Yeah, let's, let's, see, see, how let's see how it works. Right. Now, this is what you want to do to go up is you put your foot in there, your toes in there, and you pump up. Pump okay. up twice, Rob, and see what happens. Like that. Now, it's relatively easy. Yeah. When you get up all the way, you'd lock this in the up position. This bottom shackle is in the up position. And what keeps you from slipping down, especially as the poles wear out, is you want to lock this crank. You'll notice the crank is a spiral square, mm -hmm. and the hole it goes into is a square hole. If you work it over so that the square of the crank goes through the square of the hole, and this shackle is up, you can jump on it a couple of times. You'll see it. It's not going to go down on you. No. Now, to come down, you reverse it. You push the crank with your hammer back that way. Now, here's where the awkward part comes in. Okay. This is why you might not like this system. You've got to put a foot there, okay. and you've got to crank down. Both at somewhat, the same time. Okay. Somewhat awkward. And I've got to do this 20 feet You've got feet to up. do this to go up and down the 20 feet. Well, now, okay. once again... Two of them. You'd have to have Jennifer at the other side, <laughs> and you'd do it... Uh, I see. Yeah, you've got to get coordinated. <laughs> now, now, this is good in that the only thing that sits on the ground is this 4x4 four four area. Right. You could put a little piece of wood under there, a mud block, or a block to prevent yeah. it from sinking down. Is this but about the again, safest? Is it well, the safest? The other problem that I'm looking at, though, is that we've got to get up 20 feet with uh, some patio doors and shingles and all mm -hmm. sorts of materials and equipment up there. And two people working, I'm not sure that's going to be safe or a big enough area. Well, you, if you want to make this area wider and you want to take care of the rough terrain area, I would probably recommend steel scaffolding, tubular steel scaffolding, which we have some out in the yard if you'd like to go take a look at. Sure. And we'll put some together. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we call pipe staging pipe in this staging. part of the country, yeah. You know, I can't believe how many ladders you guys sell. Well, Bob, uh, a ladder is somewhat like a hammer you, when you think about it. Everyone has to have at least one in their house. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Rob's got a step ladder, as he told me, yeah. around the house. And those of us that uh, have to clean our gutters all have at least one extension ladder to get to them. Get up on the roof, right? sure. And if you want to work on your TV antenna or fix your chimney, you might even have a third longer end. This uh, is going to be the way to go. Ah. OK, what we have here is some steel scaffolding. Now, uh, what you look for when you go to rent it, Rob, first of all, this is one panel or one end frame, is you want to make sure that the locks work good. Locks look like this, basically, in this part of the country. They all do the same job. You want to make sure that the coupling pin is securely pinned in here so that it won't lift out. And you look for a frame that's clean and, and not overly rusted and not bent. Now, if you want to grab that end there, we'll bring it over into place. What we're going to have to do first is put it in on top of these two screw jacks, these leveling devices. You don't level it until actually you put it together. OK. Now, if you hold it there, for what we can do is we can put one of the braces together. You grab the brace over there, and you always put the brace on the bottom first. Why don't I show you how to do the first one? You pull up the lock, and you put it, the hole on the brace through the stud, like so. And then here, why don't you try this one? OK. How's that? That's Looks simple good. enough. Yep. OK, now you take the next panel, and you got to be careful now. you got to make sure that the horizontal bars, these here, line up with the ones over there because you're going to climb this. Now you do the bottom first. Well, let me put it on Let's the jack. Put the screw jack first, right? Do the screw jack first. Watch your fingers. As in working with all this kind of equipment, you've got to be very careful not to jam your fingers. Sure. Lift the lock and put it back on. All right, do the top one next. OK, now we're getting there. Now you do the getting there, but not quite. It wouldn't be safe if you used it like that, Bob. Uh -huh. A lot of people, you know, do what they call skip the braces. Like you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. It, it works because it works together as a unit. Now, what we're going to have when we're done will be a scaffolding unit that will be five foot wide, five foot high, and seven foot long. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable unit to work from. As you can see, the frame heights are about as high as I am, which makes it very comfortable for me to lift up. 
Now to make it rigid and to give you some way to stand on and to level it, you put a plank on it. Now this is not just a two by 10 wooden plank. This is an aluminum railed plywood deck plank designed for scaffolding, nothing else, with the hooks on the end of it. When we set the tower up complete, you'd have a full deck of these, so there's we no place to fall off. Three of them, so we'd have a real right. good work surface. Now, take your level out, put your level out on here, and then what you do is when the level's up there, is you'd watch the bubble on the level, and you'd level it up into place. Then when you think you've got it level, I usually recommend that you get on top of it and you jump once or twice, yeah. and it'll sink down into the loom. Now, to protect your loom, You'd put a piece of plywood or a mud block. Well, yeah, we'd put some plywood over the soil. Right, right, just so it wouldn't sink down too far. And pretty now, much that's it. How, ma how many of these are we going to need? We've got a work section that's 12 feet wide and 20 feet up. Well, we would recommend to do an area like that, you'd add one more section to this, uh -huh. a third panel this way, more cross bracing in the middle, another set of screw jacks, and to go up to 20 feet to make it safe with a full deck of plank at the top, and the guardrails, because we know Rob doesn't want Jennifer to fall, fall off backwards. Oh, you're talking about 110 to 120 dollars for eight sections like this. Right, for eight sections. Is that the whole by the thing. week or? That's for 28 days. That's for for a month. That's not bad. Worth of time. Not bad. That's right. Well, now, gonna, how, how am I going to get it out to the house? Well, you have two choices. If you prefer and you want us to deliver it right now, most rental houses probably get about a dollar a mile one way. But you got to be home. You got to miss work during the day because you've got to be there to help the driver take it off. Your option would be to show up on a Saturday and rent a trailer or borrow a truck from somebody. Okay, I better go rent the trailer. <laughs> Terrific. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, well, we'll okay, come back we'll and get it. Okay, we'll be seeing you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Adam. Good luck, Rob. Thanks. Yeah, if you just aim it straight in. I think if I just take it across the lawn. Right, I wouldn't try backing it up. No, <laughs> but if we can get it closer. Hi, Jennifer. We're going to get it uh, closer up here. Oh boy, great. Hey, look what you brought me. You got the brake on? Yep. You're gonna be all set. Rob's already got a lesson on how to put all this pipe staging together. Yep. And listen, what I, I need is it. two towers <laughs> right over here. You oh my the God. Was fun. Yeah, two towers side by side going straight up so we can do the work on this ridge. Right. And then the rest of it goes right around the back up here. Make sure you put some plywood down or something so that it doesn't start sinking in the soil. And you know remember, how remember yeah. how to level it. Oh, Below he's an the expert. Leveling, uh... He's had a lesson. <laughs> You've got yeah. about three days before Norm will be back to help do all the framing up there, okay? okay. And you'll be a great help. <laughs> We're running out of time for today. I hope you can join us again next week when we'll be actually doing the framing on this little shed dormer. Till then, I'm Bob Vila for This Old House. Should be a piece of cake. Well, uh, we're going to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> this old house is made possible by a grant from Owens Corning Fiberglass, makers of pink fiberglass insulation, fiberglass ceiling panels, bathing fixtures, and other Owens Corning building products that put houses in the pink.